Hi, this is James Bardon. Um, I want to uh, call your attention to a PDF put out by uh, the International Planned Parenthood Federation, which is a subsidiary of the UN, uh, the United Nations which is a private organization representing private interests um, for whose constituents you have never, ever once voted. Let me repeat, the UN, the United Nations, is a private organization for whose constituents, or I should, it's not the right word, for whose representatives, for whose personnel you have never voted. And they are dictating policy for the entire world, completely undemocratically. Uh, there are no elections for the UN. Let's get this through our heads. UN Members are appointed. There is nothing democratic about the UN. And th this is what is going on at the UN. Okay? Uh, what I'm about to reference is um, a UN branch. And it's completely undem undemocratic and it's uh, it's communism basically. Who staffs the UN? Who's behind the UN? Who funds the UN? It's all private, all private families, private banking families, the same people that run the world monetary circuitry, run the UN and run NATO to go destroy perfectly good countries like Libya. So I'm going to throw a link into the uh, information section of this broadcast. It's from the International Planned Parenthood Found Federation. Not even a foundation, it's a federation. International Planned Parenthood Federation. Um, this is UN powered all the way. And here we have exclaim exclamation point young people's guide to sexual rights colon and IPPF that is International Planned Parenthood Federation declaration and this is a PDF that you can peruse at your own leisure leisure and I'm just gonna uh, quote from it a little bit at will. Um, um, there's a table of contents, a list of acronyms. Why a guide on sexual rights? Um, who, who is Exclaim intended for? Why was this guide developed? A bit of background on young people's sexual rights. And here we're getting into the meat of the matter. The gristle missile, if you will. A bit of background on young people's sexual rights. Sexual rights, like all human rights, are universal, inalienable, indivisible, interrelated, and interdependent, and impose obligations. 
What is the difference between sexual rights and reproductive rights? What makes young people's sexual rights different from those of adults? What does the evolving capacity of young people mean? The roots of the matter. What is a principle? Sexuality is an integral part of being human for all young people. Do you get it? Hmm? All young people are sexual, and therefore they have sexual rights. Do you get it yet? Sexuality and sexual pleasure are important for all young people, irrespective of reproductive desires. Do you get it yet? Sexual pleasure and sexual desires are just an innate right of all people, no matter what their age. One month, two months, three years, five years, seven years, nine years, doesn't matter. The sexual desire is an, an, an innate right of all people. But, you know, if you, if you happen to miss your property tax payment on the house that you bought straight up in America, that's not an innate human right. That's not, not enough of a right to keep them from sending police dressed as soldiers to take away your fucking house because you couldn't manage to pay this month's property tax. Okay, but all children under 18 have innate sexual rights. Um, the evolving capacities of children and young people must be recognized. What is sexual pleasure? Well, that's a really pressing question, isn't it? What is sexual pleasure? Gosh. You know, the, um, the financial sphere is burning up into a, mil a million smoldering icons of a false god. And uh, we have here the evolving capacities of children and young people must be recognized from the UN. A private organization that is taxing you out of existence. Young people's sexual rights are human rights. Oh, really? Number one, the right to equality. I guess equality between infants and adults. Make sense? The right to participation. Oh, yes. A six-year-old child has the right to participation in sex with... Um, a consenting adult. Well, at least the adult's consenting. The right to life and to be free from harm. Well, say this to the hundreds of thousands of children's, children that are abducted and thrown into the sex trade market by uh, Russian Jewish mafia every year. And Israeli mafia, I might add. The hundreds of thousands of women and children that are sold into sex slavery and to be characters in snuff films every year. Yeah, they have rights, right? Right. The right to privacy. Oh, yeah, privacy. Privacy is a big commodity nowadays, right? Yeah. With all the, you know... Um, uh, snoop, snoopery that's going on with the internet. The right to personal autonomy and to be recognized as an individual before the law. Where the, well, that's the last thing you want is to be recognized as an individual before the law. That's the last thing you want. Because the law is not what you think it is. The right to think and express oneself freely. What the hell does that have to do with children and sexuality? 
when children express themselves freely, they draw pictures. They, they, they play with words. What does this have to do with sexual rights for children? As if there ever was such a thing. The right to health. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, health. Sure. What better way to ensure the health of children than to publish their manifesto of sexual rights? That all children are sexual and they should be having sex. Huh? Oh yeah. That's a that's a great plank in the platform. Yeah. The right to know and learn. It's just it's fluff, it's just garbage, it's bullshit. The right to choose whether or not to marry or have children. Well, that's a major uh, plank there in the platform. Because um, if, if we give them what they want, uh, nobody's going to be marrying and having children. The right to have your rights upheld. I guess that's like, you know, you get three wishes and you make sure that the third wish is to have infinite wishes, right? Yeah. Um, this is just, this is an insane document. Uh, this is basically uh, a manifesto from the UN to sexualize children and to normalize ped pedophilia. Um, I'm going to put the link into the uh, information section of this video. I'm just going to read a few more quotes from it before I throw it up. And it feels like throwing it up. I mean, it feels like throwing up to um, recite it. But here we go. Sexual rights, like all human rights, are universal, inalienable, indivisible, interrelated, and interdependent. Listen to this nonsense. Listen to this fucking rhetoric. And they impose obligations. Well, I suppose, like uh, obligations on the pedos to uh, take care of their 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 uh, children. Eh? Universal. Every single person in every part of the world is inherently entitled to human rights. I guess that includes, you know, like getting blown up by drones, yeah, for doing nothing except uh, being in the vicinity of someone who pissed off. A dictator named Obama, Obama, Osama, Obama, Obama, Osama, right? Yeah. Inalienable. Everyone is entitled um, to human rights for being human. Human rights cannot be taken away or given up from anyone, irrespective of their age, gender, ethnicity, race, religion, nationality, sexual orientation. Uh, socioeconomic status, disability, HIV st or status, or human health. Yeah, man. Yeah. We're all so precious. We're all so special. You know, unless you happen to be a brown-skinned child living in a, a Pakistani village where there's drones flying overhead 24 fucking hours a day, right? Yeah, besides that, um, human rights are universal for the homosexuals and the pedophiles, right? Indivisible. No one human right is more important than another. Um, uh, yeah, uh, uh, especially for the, the, the banksters that, that run the planet. Yeah. Um, no one uh, human is any more important than the other. For the banksters that run the planet, uh, that's certainly true, right? I mean, uh, we have to pay for their wars and we have to pay for their uh, environmental destruction. We have to pay for 
their um, financial games and for their uh, fiat money shenanigans. We have to pay for all that. Uh, and the, the people below them are uh, simply nothing. But everybody has equal universal human rights. What is sexual pleasure? Sexual pleasure is much more than mere physical stimulation or orgasm. It refers to diverse forms of emotional, psychological, and social fulfillment. Sexual pleasure, for some people, can be sharing an intimate moment lying next to a partner. For others, it can be feeling a sense of acceptance and affirmation, affirmation of one's sexual identity. Others may also feel sexual pleasure from providing mutual pleasure or stimulation with a partner. Some aspects of sexual pleasure are individual while others are more social. Gang bang. A person's idea of sexual pleasure can change and differ from one situation to the next. Unfortunately, mainstream media often gives the false impression that the height of sexual pleasure for all people is orgasm. Well, it is. I mean, it is the height, right? Well, but don't listen to common sense. It is important to recognize that the very notion of sexual pleasure is shaped by an endless mix of social, individual, cultural, political, and economic influences. Nice way to intellectualize uh, an amazing experience that is um, indescribable. Nice way to describe it. Um, an endless mix of social, individual, cultural, political, and economic influences. Right. Have you ever had sex? I mean, come on. Have you ever had sex? Is that what it was? An uh, endless mix of social, individual, cultural, political, and economic influences. Is that what it was? Yeah. Um, therefore, the meaning of sexual pleasure can vary considerably. I'll tell you what this is, man. This is a PDF manual meant to sexualize children and to make pedophilia mainstream. This is what the UN is trying to do nowadays, is trying to make pedophilia mainstream. This is a branch of the UN spewing their fucking academic bullshit to try to make pedophilia mainstream. That's what it is. And I will tell you that there was a time when the good people of the world, not the sick, fucking, perverted rulers of the world, the real people of the world, the people that produced, the people that ran farms, the peasants, the people that produced the food, the people that produced the wine, the people that produced what was necessary for the continuation of life, the people that were sucked on by the parasites above them, who took upwards of 60% of everything that they did and left them with 40% to get them through the winter if they were lucky. Those people were not obsessed by sex, by fucking sex. Those people knew where things belonged in life. Sex is a wonderful experience. It's a peak experience. It really is. But look around nowadays at all the porn produced by who? produced by Jew, look around at all the porn nowadays. Look at how hypersexualized everything is and everybody is. Yes, sex is a peak experience. And the reason it's a peak experience is because it's related to a peak function, which is to produce another 
man or woman, another boy or girl. It's an incentive to take on that responsibility. And it's a wonderful experience, but it's not a be all and end all. It's not a me it's not an end unto itself, the way that we have been raised to think that it is. It is a, a wonderful, thrilling experience between a man and a woman who have committed to each other to bring other children, to bring children, other people into the world to continue the lineage. That's what it is. And I suspect that in the old days, it was really something. It was really something to be in your teepee or your hogan or your igloo or whatever you were in. And to create a child, something you had been waiting for your whole life. And pow, I bet that orgasm was really something. And then you've got a baby and then you've got to go off and get some more meat, gather some more berries. There are other things more pressing things in life than just sitting around and humping as a thing in and of itself, which is what the elites are very fucking into. And that's what they want us to be into. And that's what the homosexual agenda is all about. And that's what the pedophilia agenda is all about. Sex for sex's sake and pornography. You know, just, just organs grinding on a screen. Like there's nothing more serious in life, like defending yourself from elite predators. Folks, they are trying to make pedophilia normal from the UN level. It is happening these days. There's a pedophile scandal in the UK with Jimmy Savile. And concurrently, there is a massive push to ramrod the normalization, normalization of pedophilia into the popular cultures of the world. And I used to think that the culture I live in, Korea, was immune to it. But I'm starting to have second thoughts. These motherfuckers don't stop. They never stop. They never let up. And I'm starting to see how it's possible that if they continue to go unchallenged and never let up and never stop, eventually people will roll over and say, oh yeah, well, what can you do? What can you do? It's the way of the future, right? Exclaim, Young People's Guide to Sexual Rights, an international Planned Parenthood, uh, what is it, Foundation, Federation? Federation, Declaration. I'm going to link it to this video. And you look at it for yourself, man. Children have the right to explore their sexuality with adults. This is what the fine folks at the privately owned UN are pushing. And if people have any sense anymore, they will string up these motherfucking pedo psycho pervs and hang them from the lampposts of the streets of the major cities of the world. Now I have to, um, I've been 
ranting on so long, I I lost my um, upload screen, so I've been going on for 25 minutes. It's a record. We'll see if um, we'll see if it goes through. There will be a follow-up to this video, over and out.